Student Involvement invites you to the Season of Giving events, scheduled November 16th to November 21st on the Bronzeville and Edinburgh UTRGV campuses. For more information, visit the link on the screen. Coming up in just moments, veterans are honored across the country as the U.S. celebrates Veterans Day. Hear how the City of Edinburgh commemorated the occasion. Plus a UTRGV TV exclusive, a one-on-one -on -one with a war veteran. Hear his story next. Plus, we bring you the latest in sports as UTRGV TV starts now. Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Cavazos and thank you for joining us on this week's edition of UTRGV TV. At the top of our show, respect for those who have served our country was on full display in the streets of Edinburgh as the annual Veterans Day Parade took place. Our reporter Mark Lopez was in attendance and brings us the details of the patriotic event. On a chilly Saturday morning, with flags waving in full force and floats passing by, Efranin Martinez is at the annual Veterans Day Parade in Edinburgh, looking on with somber eyes, honoring a holiday with the ones he loves. I came because of the grandkids and uh, basically to honor the uh, veterans all over, uh, not only here in Edinburgh, but uh, throughout the nation and overseas. He's not just here to salute those who have served, but because he was on the front lines himself. I'm a veteran. Uh, I was there in 64 to 70, and then the Army called me back to go in 80 to 82 to open up a company in Brownsville. The lessons he learned for the Army still follow him until this day. Well, number one, it teaches you discipline. I mean, uh, when you're back in high school, uh, and you carry that discipline even the way I stand. And for Martinez and the other hundreds of onlookers, unity is always at the forefront. I, I walked through the civil rights movement uh, when I was there in 63, that, and I always remember that uh, when I stepped down from the bus in Luciana, Shreveport, there was a big sign that said, no dogs, no Mexicans allowed, but, uh, it, it went through, to me, the only colors that I see is red, white, and blue. I don't see anything else different than that. For UTRGV TV, I am Mark Lopez. From the Star County brush to the waters of Cameron County, the valley is home to hundreds of veterans. Our reporter Orlando Vargas brings us a story of one veteran who fought in the Pacific during World War II. That's me, yeah. At 97 years old. That's the same one, that's the engineer. Fred Mann is a living history book. 1939, August, very hungry, and I like to look at the $21. This is me way back. This is me as the first, that's Freddy. <laughs> the Virginia native grew up on a farm. From the start, he knew his calling was to serve his country. I always wanted to, wanted to go into service. I wanted the Navy, but the Navy says he's got a broken nose. A military career that started in the Coast Guard and spanned over three decades. First night in, the commanding officer of that ship came back and ran us off. War struck the nation. Just as I crossed the street to go see him, the word got out that Pearl Harbor had been hit. Okay, made a short visit back to Norfolk. Man got the orders to ship out aboard the USS George Fox Elliott, a Navy transport. His destination, unknown. Didn't know we were going to Guadalcanal. Didn't even know where it was. Never heard of the name before. The U.S. invasion on the Pacific took an unexpected turn for Man. My ship got uh, run into by an airplane, right straight into it, burned up. He sprang into action, put out the blaze, and saved the lives of those on board. Say, here to come in. Here's where it's out. Whom do, whom do, whom do, whom do. 90 millimeters, bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Memories of a battle 73 years ago, preserved as if it had happened yesterday. You feel about a ship like you do about your home. That's your home. Ship gone, you got no home. And soon I didn't have a home. An act of valor that earned him a silver star. No, I won't tell you about that. No? No. Okay. Uh-uh. Anybody brags about that don't deserve it. On deal. It's a job that has to be done to do it. An act of humility, even in the darkest of times. In Westaco, Orlando Vargas, UTRGV TV. This past week, the Brownsville City Plaza held a ribbon-cutting ceremony commencing the opening of the Brownsville Veteran Resource Center. Today we honor our veterans, those men and women who self selflessly dedicated their lives to the service of our nation.
The newly formed partnership between the City of Brownsville and the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs in McAllen will assist local veterans with services ranging from readjustment counseling to community education. As veterans shared their war stories across the U.S., we spoke with one student who shared his own experience after enlisting in the military and how serving his country helped shape his future. Patriotic spirit could be felt throughout the UTRGV campus Wednesday as the university honored military veterans. Uh, veterans, uh, they fight for our country, they fight for all of us. They represent us over there, overseas, or wherever, and it's important to know that they're fighting for our freedom. U.S. veterans filled the main building lawn and shared their experience attending college after serving in the military, something students like Aaron Vela can relate to. I know some people find it kind of hard to believe that you could go away for so long and still come back and go to school. So it's, it's a good experience. At just 26 years old, Vela is a proud veteran, even displaying his tattoo of the American flag as he recalled enlisting in the Army. I enlisted, I was going to a job fair over at TSDC in 2007. And the recruiter came to talk to me and pretty much just caught my eye with all the information and I just ended up enlisting. It was a pretty good opportunity for me. Vela even spent time overseas in Korea and Afghanistan, serving a total of eight years in the military. Being an 18-year-old kid, never been away from home and just helps you grow up really fast. And so you pretty much get to learn how to be a good, responsible person and just work hard, never quit in anything. After returning to the States, Vela enrolled at the University of Texas Brownsville in 2013 to pursue a degree in criminal justice. Uh, I knew it was going to be a good challenge. Um, I think the last time I went to school was 2007, so having a break from 2007 to 2013 is just the... Uh, it's a major break. Vela is not alone. Fellow veteran and UTB graduate Quentin Kamick faced similar challenges while attending school, but credits his academic success to campus resources. The Veterans of Brown kind of provided the assistance needed, such as tutors, um, any resources that we need, supplies um, available for computers. Vela has also made use of the Upward Bound program, and today he feels thankful for his experience in the military and the support he continues to receive from his community. To take a day from that for the whole year, I mean, I mean it's just only one day, but it just, it's good to recognize what, you know, what other people do for, you, for the country. The Upward Bound program is just one of several resources found within the Veterans Services Center. Our reporter Karen Los Reyes went to find out how the center is helping students achieve their education. Second Lieutenant Alamer L. Fitzgerald, U.S. Marine, Sergeant Ricky E. Jones, U.S. Army. The Veteran Services Center at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, assists not only student veterans, but also guardsmen, reservists, and their dependents. <laughs> The center assists veterans as they navigate through the university's maze of paperwork and policies. We help them with everything that they need to get paid to come to school, mm -hmm. whether it be tuition and fees or whether it be the monthly allowance that some chapter benefits allow them to get. Martinez explains the benefits that come with being a student veteran or dependent. So they get everything from priority registration, which is always awesome, uh, tuition and fees paid for, uh, monthly stipends from the VA, where it's actually spending money, you can use it however you wish. Um, tuition waivers, scholarships and grants opportunities, uh, student organization opportunities, and pretty much everything else that the regular student body is allowed to get, they're also allowed to get through this office. The staff organizes events around Veterans Day in order to commemorate those who have served our country. We're reading off all the names of people who have passed away in combat uh, in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. It's a very touching experience because, you know, you got to understand that some of the names that we're reading may be somebody that you knew, so it's very, we take it very seriously. Student veterans are encouraged to reach out and use these benefits to their advantage. For UTRGV TV, I am Karen De Los Reyes. Acquiring skills is something most individuals learn over time, but for the UTRGV ROTC, preparing Vaqueros Battalion students for life outside the classroom is a top priority. Jessica Ortiz explains. Dear Mr. President, dear Mr. President, send me out to war, send me out to war, to fight for my country, fight for my country, send me God is God, send me God is God. Leadership, commitment, and dedication. It teaches you to be a leader and think outside the box, which helps with everything. It helps in life and it helps in school. Three words that describe the Vaqueros Battalion. Their main focus? 
leadership is, is our main goal to help, help them become uh, better citizens and leaders in, in the community or in the active army. Making students into future leaders. UTRGV's ROTC offers opportunities for students who desire to further their career in the Army while receiving an education. I just want to be a leader and show people the right way to be a leader. Cadet Sergeant First Class Andrew Villegas joined ROTC in high school and is continuing this program throughout college. Well, I already came in with training, prior training experience. Uh, what it did teach me is what basic training and everything else doesn't teach you, which is you have to think about a mass, not just yourself. Viegas hopes that ROTC will place him in the area that he most desires in the future. I would like to branch into the Engineering Corps. Uh, hopefully I can get into that branch. I would like to go to Sapper and uh, Ranger School. Uh, I want to do as much as possible the, wherever it takes me. And, uh, if I can make to Colonel, which is my final goal, that would be great. ROTC students acquire more than knowledge. They build lifelong relationships. In Edinburgh, Jessica Ortiz, UTRGB TV. As war veterans were being honored across the country this week, students from Rayburn Elementary in McAllen paid tribute to their fellow classmate, who they're now calling a hero. Alina Garza brings us a story. With their shoes strapped on tight and the will to help, Rayburn Elementary came together. We wanted the family to know that he meant so much more to that to us. Eight-year-old Jace Dylan Adams lost his life two weeks ago in an accident. It was in a parking lot just like this with a light pole similar to this one that snapped and fell onto Jace's head. After being hospitalized in Corpus Christi for a few days, Jace passed away. Following Jace's death, his family decided to pay it forward by donating his organs. He will impact many, many kids in people's lives. And so we just wanted, you know, more than just a race, just to tell them thank you for everything they've done and that he'll always be a Rayburn Rocket to us and he'll always be a superhero. Members from the Rayburn family and the community took part in a 5K to honor his life. T-shirts were worn and buttons were given out to those willing to donate to Jace's family. Friend and fellow Rocket, Jalen Ramirez, remembers Jace and their time together. Jace was very nice. He would always make us laugh. He would tell us funny jokes. He would always take risks and dares. And Reporting for UTRGB TV, I am Alina Garza. McAllen held the last art walk of the year. Vendors came together to display their art and expand their business. I just like to make my stuff and like give it to people, sell it to, you know, so people can have my art. I just felt like I had to display all my creations to people and even if people don't buy them, as long as they tell me like, wow, you put a lot of knowledge and thought into that and it took a lot of creativity, makes you feel good, you know, because everyone's, well, someone's seeing your art and someone's going to tell someone. The Art Walk will return in January 2016. Despite heavy rainfall, Brownsville residents attended the Rio Grande Science and Arts Festival over the weekend. The event aims to increase community interest in science. RISA, the Rio Grande Science and Arts Festival, is uh, a series of events celebrating science through the arts. Uh, so we have performing arts, visual arts, uh, musical performances, uh, but all uh, thinking about and celebrating science. The Gladys Porter Zoo and the Brownsville Museum of Fine Art were just a few organizations that participated in the festival. From fitness and wellness to aquatics and outdoors, the UTRGV Rec Center has it all. But for one student, spending time at the rec is becoming more than just a hobby. Jessica Encina explains. The University Rec Center is home to the UTRGV RCA Rock Climbing Association. UTRGV students get the opportunity to join the team and receive the ultimate rock climbing experience. For RCA member Christian Cano, rock climbing always seemed to be a part of him. I didn't picture it as climbing, but when I was younger, I was used to like climb houses and stuff like that all the time. It was part of me. What started off as a hobby for Cano eventually became his opportunity to work at the rock wall in the rec center. I saw it one, one day and I wanted to try it out. And as soon as I started trying, uh, I saw that it was like natural for me to climb. So I did a lot of friends from the, the workers and they one day just told me, you want to work here because you look like you like it. So from there it was just an opportunity that opened to me. 
Aside from their individual trainings, the RCA gives members the opportunity to create strong bonds and lifelong friendships while competing and traveling together. It's a really good way to bond with people, especially if they like climbing too. You make, your, you make them part of your family because you're always with them and you go to trips with them and you like sleep in the same place, you camp with them. It's an amazing experience. Gano, who is a full-time student, works full-time, and also a member of the RCA, says it's important to make time for the things that you like. You like it so much that you just need to make time for it. It's not like an obligation, like, oh, I gotta go to school, and I'm so bored of the same classes that I have. No, this is the way of getting out of it. This is the way of relieving stress. That's from my point of view. His experiences as a member of the RCA have been memorable. For Gano, his journey to reach the top has only begun. The experiences that I made climbing, not, not here, this is practice for the real world. So the experiences that I made climbing are my best experiences in life. Uh, from Mexico to Austin, everything, it's worth it. I would like to do it my whole life. For UTRGV TV, I am Jessica Insignia. Let's head on over to sports with Daniel Galvan. A whole lot happened here in Edinburgh this past week, starting off with volleyball. They closed out their home schedule at the UTRGV Fieldhouse with a clean three-set sweep against CSU Bakersfield. It was the last home game for seniors Haley Durham and Casey Sanchez. And Durham capped the game off with 12 kills and four digs to help the team secure its fifth home win of the year. The other team that concluded their home games this year was men's soccer. The squad dropped a 1-2 game to Houston Baptist University with Archie Masson, the lone senior on the team, scoring the lone goal for the Vaqueros. And as we said goodbye to volleyball and men's soccer here in the Valley, the men's basketball season got underway on Saturday with an exhibition game thanks to a double-digit outing from grad students J.J. Thompson and Dakota Slaughter, as well as a 12.7 rebound day from Nick Dixon, UTRGV top Texas A&M International, and they beat them 67-58. With a whole lot of new faces on this year's roster, the team did look a little bit clunky at times, but they'll have an opportunity to rectify that against a slight step up in competition when they face the University of Miami on Friday. I'll have more on that next week. Reporting for UTRGV TV, I'm Daniel Galvan. That's all we have for you today, but remember, if you have a story you'd like us to know about, you can find us on Facebook. Just search UTRGV-TV, or you can email us to UTRGV at gmail.com. I'm Stephen Cavazos. We'll see you back here next time.